Hello, Wastelanders. In Fallout 4, when players have completed the railroad ending and the Institute is gone, players are left wondering what the railroad, so completely defined by having a nemesis, is even still in existence for. That is when Desdemona approaches the sole survivor with a mission to wipe out a long-standing enemy of synth kind and of the railroad, the L&L Raider Gang. The Bruiser is our public enemy number one, and synth kind. It'll be my pleasure. Get to it then. And voila, the railroad has a purpose again. This diverting quest, called To the Mattresses, has the player squaring off against raider bosses like Big Maud, Lucky Tatum, Tammy Mac, The Bruiser, Stevie Buchanan, and Johnny T. Walters in random areas of the map. This string of raider assassinations answers the question of what the railroad is all about once the Institute is dealt with by redirecting railroad agents from liberating synths to avenging them by hunting down leaders of various LNL raider factions in the name of badass, blood soaked comeuppance. I actually think that this aspect of the railroad story was a great idea. In fact, every faction could do with a new enemy to fight after the main story resolves. Alas, even with six parts, the LNL slaughter eventually comes to an end. If players want to keep the Raider Wrecking Party going in their playthroughs, regardless of which faction they choose, there is a new mod called Unique Raider Gangs and Patrols by Precision Tacos that adds four distinct new Raider factions to the Commonwealth for you to declare war on. Not only are these factions packed with more personality than any Raiders outside of Nuka World, the mod has no special requirements and is compatible with leveled lists and virtually every other mod you can think of. And now is the perfect time to download unique Raider Gangs and Patrols since a mod this new and simple should probably survive the Fallout 4 script extender breaking next gen update dropping at the end of the month. So let's allow Harriet and Nick Valentine from our Railroad Renaissance Faction Overhaul video to make a return and take us out and show us the new Raider threat in the Commonwealth. Thanks to the Fallout Commander mod by Mad God, Harriet has formed a handpicked squad of Raider hunters from among the Railroad's ranks. Let's meet the team. A reprogrammed Gen 1 synth with no official name and no fear of death is affectionately called Tin Man by the squad and has saved them all on several occasions. Diesel is an elite heavy in Railroad T-51 armor and he has lots of stories. Just don't ask him about why his assault rifle is named Lucifer. Judge is the squad's second power armored heavy, one of the most experienced Railroad agents available. It is rumored that Glory herself trained him to refurbish his minigun. His one condition for joining Harriet's squad? The minigun comes too. Dare is an agent who is up for anything, and even though he isn't wearing the black uniform, everyone thinks of him as a heavy. And now, let's go hunting. Priority one for the railroad is the dangerous new gang who sparked a turf war with Desdemona on the simple basis of their criminally unoriginal name, the Rail Raiders. The mod description has this to say. The railway used to be a trail that could be followed all the way to Diamond City. Now it's a trail that will lead to terror and death. The Rail Raiders came from the far south to lay claim to the railway tracks of the Commonwealth as their own. They are led by a murderous psychopath named Spike Rail. Extreme caution should be practiced when near the train tracks, especially if the spinning barrels of a minigun are heard. Well, don't threaten our Raider Eliminators with a good time. They are armed and ready to head up the tracks from Oberlin Station and seek out Spike Rail's crew. The Rail Raiders are confronted near Grey Garden, which should be helpful if the robots there get into the fight. And immediately we encounter new Raider variants, including a legendary Rail Raider Station Master with a minigun. To complicate matters further, the Brotherhood of Steel arrive and are hostile to Rail Raiders and Rail Roaders alike. Be warned, you may want to add this mod after you have played through the storyline a bit because these enemies will be the bane of early game players trying to use the train tracks as a safe path through the wasteland. The Rail Raiders seem to be stunned but not dead in many cases, so we may have to finish them off ourselves. But thankfully, the Grey Garden bots are swarming like flies and helping mop up the Rail Raider enemies.
Once they have been dispatched, the gang's gear does offer some serious style points, as Harriet will demonstrate. Looking at their armor's protective stats, you will notice an emphasis on radiation resistance, which makes sense since radioactive barrels are commonly encountered along many sections of the rail line. Aesthetically, the Rail Raiders have an overalls and ammo belts theme with some skulls thrown in, and the deranged spike top helmet you can take off of Spike Rail. In any case, some of their items may appeal to players since they are bringing a clear sense of style, but get ready, because style-wise, the second gang on Harriet's hit list are hard to ignore. That gang is the Sunflare Cult. The mod description has this to say. Little is known about this group. They don't sleep at all. They follow an esoteric sun cult, are emblazoned with secret symbols, are led by an old man with a golden mask, and have a horrifying penchant for self-immolation. Our squad of Raider Eliminators will be headed into the northwest section of the map to track down this burning man turned man burning group of psychos. They fight with Molotovs and shish kebab swords, and again, new raider variants are encountered, including Sunflare cultists and a legendary Sunflare zealot. Ironically, this gang's masked appearance is quite chilling, and now that the fighting has cooled down, Harriet will take a moment to pose for us in Sunflare Duds. Notice the extreme fire resistance on the Sunflare garments. The ferocious forged would be completely outmatched in a showdown with the Sunflare cult, so it may be useful to pick off a cult member and steal their wardrobe before visiting Saugus Ironworks. And maybe flame resistance doesn't matter to you, but if you want some distinctively disturbing duds, Sunflare casual wear might just be the ticket. We have gone from Rail Raider Frying Pan to Sunflare Fire and now into the Blue Abyss with our third Raider group, Cyan's Gang. These blue battlers take two things seriously, firearms and fashion. The mod description tells us, They are a dangerous gang that splintered from a post-war military platoon. They dye their fatigues cyan and adorn them with symbols and graffiti that signify hidden roles, ranks, and stories. The gang is well-armed, experienced, and cohesive. Their signature cyan swirl marks their presence. Be wary if you see it. The gang is run by Cyan, an extremely dangerous raider known for both his charisma and unmatched ruthlessness. You can find them in the ruins of Lexington. Note the intricate and surreal art adorning Cyan's outfit and the clothes of his followers. Only by besting these baddies can you get your hands on some Banksified blue accessories. As a bonus, we picked up some legendaries from Cyan himself and a legendary raider lieutenant, but it's the clothes we really want to see. So let's give Harriet a minute to slip into something more psychedelic. The defensive stats on Cyan Gang's apparel is slightly above the vanilla versions and offers extra rad protection, but I think you'll agree it's the visuals that will tempt you to steal them for your own.
before you rush off to pop some tags on that cyan style, remember that we have one last enemy's closet to ransack. The last of the four gangs is built different, and also is the first to yield a meaningful new weapon type. The Junk Legion are spear-wielding melee specialists. The mod description briefs us on their origins. Legend has it that many years ago, a group of outcast raiders and Brotherhood of Steel soldiers found shelter from the apocalypse in a junkyard. They band together and built spears and armor out of scrap. Years of training makes them very agile and extremely adept at melee combat, which has earned them their Spartan-like reputation. Today, they pillage the eastern wilderness, spearing unsuspected wastelanders, robbing scavengers, or simply hunting for food. It's true that these anachronistic aggressors are quick to close the gap, but taking down the raiding Romans of the Junk Legion is worth it. It will get you not only some styling Spartan wear and helmet hair, but also a junk spear that, once enhanced at a workbench, is completely OP. For those of you who are fashion curious, Harriet will don some Roman rags and show you what the apocalyptic Achilles looks like. Notice that in terms of damage resistance, the Junk Legion's armor tops the other three gangs we have looked at and could be a beginning basis for a sturdy build. And fans of purple so long neglected by most factions will rejoice. Fallout London's release may be delayed, but you can still roam the wastes in a medieval-looking helm in the meantime, thanks to the Junk Legion. So there you have it. The thing your Fallout 4 playthrough needs most. As Desdemona might say, the only thing that matters. A new set of enemies to keep you coming back to wage war in the Commonwealth. Leave the video a like and help the YouTube algorithm spread the word. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification button to be sure you catch our future content. And if you want to support the channel, become a member so I can make more videos and lavish special attention on you. Later, Raiders. I'll see you in the next one. P.S. I told you this spear was OP.